President-elect Donald Trump has been calling for a wall along the Mexican border now for some time. The question remains, who is going to build it? We're going to build a wall. Believe me, we're going to build a wall. We have a trade deficit with Mexico. They'll pay for the wall. They'll be very happy about it. By the way, who's going to pay for the wall? Who's going to pay for the wall? Donald Trump also tweeting last night about the wall. He said, quote, dishonest media says Mexico won't be paying for the wall if they pay a little later so the wall can be built more quickly. Media is fake. One suggestion comes from Bristol County, Massachusetts Sheriff Thomas Hodgson. He is sending U.S. prison inmates to build the wall. He joins us now. Sheriff Hodgson, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Maria. Good morning. Yeah, it's an interesting idea that you have. Tell us about it. How do you envision your inmates building Donald Trump's proposed wall? Well, it's not just our inmates, Maria. This is going to be a national initiative that I've been working on for a couple of years where sheriffs can respond not only to infrastructure projects but also to natural disasters. And what I would envision, and I think the other sheriffs in the country would envision, is the opportunity to give these inmates a chance to go to the wall and, uh, and uh, save taxpayers you know, millions of dollars in building it uh, with free labor, all voluntary, and, um, and be able to also prevent people from being able to get in here uh, to work their way in illegally violating our laws and committing crimes in our neighborhoods and preserving jobs for uh, not only American citizens and legal residents, but also for inmates when they uh, are released from prison. Is there a precedent for this, Sheriff? I mean, have you seen something like this before where inmates... Uh, are, are, you know, asked to do something on such a huge scale in, in terms of work. I mean, it sounds like a good idea. Can it be controlled where you've got the inmates in one spot building, you know, building something a, a, as massive as, as what we're talking about? Oh, sure. You know, one of the great things about sheriffs across this country is we're doing this in communities within our own counties. And uh, to have a work camp would be, I had somebody send me an email recently and said, look, I have, I have five acres right in New Mexico near the border, and we'd be happy to offer it for the work camp site uh, for the inmates. And you can set them up just like the military do, very temporary work sites. We'll have correction officers accompanying these inmates there. And uh, it makes all the sense in the world. It's not a problem. One sheriff out west, uh, I believe a couple of years ago, had his inmates trained to work uh, fighting the wildfires, and when those inmates were done, they ended up becoming firefighters. So this is a really re rehabilitative program that benefits America, benefits the inmates, and uh, does a great thing for our country. So the federal prison system operates 53 factories uh, across the country, producing $500 million of clothing, electronics, furniture, and other goods. That was in the fiscal year ended September 30th. Uh, this has to be something that the inmates would also find uh, 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 positive. No question, Maria. And, you know, the other thing is there's been a lot of talk about we need migrant workers to come in and pick the crops. Do you know how many thousands and thousands of inmates we have in California who would love to go out and pick crops? Give the, give the uh, farm owner a tax break for using the inmates. Have the inmates go out there, work during the day. They'd love to volunteer to go out and do it. You could even put a small portion of money in their, in their, their accounts for when they leave and also offset some of the costs for prisons. Uh, and in addition to that, when they're done, they're going to be tired, come back to the prison, and there'll be less problems in the prisons at night because they're out there working every day and, uh, and they're going to need their sleep to get back up and go to work again. Teaches them a work ethic. We solve the problem. Uh, and it's uh, win-win it's for everybody. What, what, have, what have you heard from Donald Trump on this idea, Sheriff? We haven't heard uh, back yet. Uh, we know that they are aware of it. And uh, we'll be, uh, I'll be reaching out to some people uh, actually today and tomorrow to, uh, to see if, in fact, there, there is any decision of interest in this. But I've got to believe, look, Donald Trump's doing everything he can to find ways not only to save uh, the cost to taxpayers for government, but also... For us, thinking out of the box, looking at creative ways to make, uh, make big wins. And I think this is a win-win all the way around. It's the kind of formula he's always looking uh, for. Uh, I, mean, I got to imagine yeah, he may have I an mean, interest in the, it. I, I wonder. I mean, the Homeland Security uh, Department uh, identified more than 400 miles along that U.S.-Mexico border where the new fencing could be enacted. 
um, you'd obviously have to have some kind of a partnership w in terms of where the inmates are on that, on that border. Oh, there's no question. We'll be working cl closely with the federal government on this. But I will tell you that, look, sheriffs do this every day in their communities. It's not a difficult thing. These inmates are going to be uh, lower level security inmates that are preparing for reentry into their various communities across the country. And uh, as yep. I said, we do it every day. And uh, it, I think it, it's something that absolutely can work and be a great cost savings for the taxpayer and rehabilitative program for inmates. Sheriff, we'll be watching. It sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank, thanks for having me, Maria. Great to see you. Sheriff Thomas Hodgson there. Coming up